What's up? What's the word? I never in my life thought that I would see Kamala Harris dancing. We gotta talk about this. We got a video for it, do we? Do we got a video for it? I mean, I you invite, I don't see a problem in it either. Like you invited a group of young women. That's a popular song. It's a turn song. Why not? You know, why not turn up real quick? Well, the the VP is supposed to be um a robot, I guess. I don't know. I I think that's. Yeah, dope. I be like when Barack Obama be dropping his song list, his every year the songs that he like and stuff. Like, don't nobody be like, oh my god, I can't believe he liked Jay Z. Oh my god, I can't believe he listened to Chief Keith. Like, let them people live. They're human beings at the end of the day with musical taste. I would expect for somebody from our west to say like that. You would look. Y'all problem is y'all don't want people to be human beings. Ain't got nothing. It has nothing out west because I'm out west. Me, I'm a real person. All right, I'm mm-hmm. real. Hold on, though. No. Let me ask you something. Out west, blue micro having. I swear. I never <laughs> had blue micro. Because I bet you that he never side eyed Barack Obama for that. Cody be a little misogynist sometimes. I'll be you only Barack Obama do hell. I don't even people. know how to do massages. Can I get nigga on here? Because <laughs> Barack Obama did. Y'all thought it was just- Okay, right. So that's what I'm saying. You was inside of it? Barack, for one, Barack Obama is a brother from the south side of Chicago. And he's always let it be known this is who he is. That's for one. Two, Kamala Harris, in an election year, decides to sh- to bring sexy, to, to do ski ye at the to pander to black voters. Barack Obama has never pandered to black voters. Is that pandering or? Oh my God. This is not. So eat, pulling up to the hood, eating chicken ain't pandering. Sneakers. Back, no, make sne- to the hood. Uh, yes, Nobody. that is. But Ski Ye is not pandering. Oh my God. That's crazy that you even say that. Okay, so let's just say they didn't play ski ye and they just invited the group of young women down there. That would have been, that would have been like okay, cool. But the fact that she's pending to the black vote and she feel like this is okay. Sexy Red has probably one of the top. She's one of the most influential uh, individuals. I want to say influential because she's just who she, she's not influencing. She just she's representing a culture of different women that she relates to, right? So she's not influenced, right? Um, but Sexy Red has is very popular. So she's one of the most popular uh, entertainers that we have right now. So she has, she, with her popularity it makes her relatable. So if I say I'm a Sexy Red fan as a, as a politician, makes her relatable, I can get those black votes and make me relatable. Same way the, way the pastor just did the whole year glow because he was trying to relate to a younger audience when his, in his sermon. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like Kamala Harris has done things throughout her course of being a VP that would br- like nurturing the relationship between the black vote and herself? I think she's done stuff with uh without motive, just because this is what she wanted to do. I think she made sure that the fact that she's a quote unquote black woman, um was always kind of seen like through her through her vice presidency. But is that but it, it never it never came off authentic like this okay, is Okay, that's who, what I would who, uh, I, that's was, what who I was before I came to vice president. You know what I mean? Cuz it was even talks of that from other I was saying as she was the candidate for it and just like they were like it wasn't that wasn't who she was or she didn't put this stuff on the forefront before she became um you know what I'm saying before she came uh vice president, even while she was running for president. She was originally running for president, then she dropped out and became Joe Biden's vice president. Uh so 
I don't, yeah, it wasn't, that wasn't on the front for her. Even her being a lady at Alpha Kappa Alpha wasn't like a huge thing until you needed that black vote. So, no, nah, I don't think it's like a genuine thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so then let me ask you this. Um, do you feel like politicians in general are, gen- like, I mean, I feel like this is the name of the game when it comes to um, politicians in general. This is something that they do with everyone. So, whether it's Trump, Trump went and was like farmers, farmers. That was his thing throughout his, you know, his candidacy. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out, like, is this a matter of just the name of the game or is this a matter of, you know, um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Do we do we hold this against solely her or is this a thing that is just a thing not, within politics? I'm not putting it solely against her personally. I'm not saying this is just saying. Kamala Harris. I'm just saying, like, yo, just I just hope everybody just see what they're doing. They're not addressing none of the issues that y'all got that we have as a community. They're not really no one's still ain't talked to us about reparations. None of us still ain't talked to us about programs to get our people, black and brown people, out of poverty. They still ain't had a total talk about how they gave all this money to these uh, these migrants and still ain't gave none to the black homeless and the black people that need some. They still ain't addressed none of those issues. But they give us sexy red, or they give us gym shoes, or mm. they give us chicken. Like, mm. this is all I'm saying. Let me ask you something. So, in the event that we yeah. end up. People are performative, though. So, they so they know how to relate. They know how to relate to us. They, they Let me ask you this, though. We end up with two candidates that are performative for this next election. How do we vote? Where do, where are we voting on? Because I feel like a lot of people voted for Joe Biden because he was the lesser of the evil. Are we continuing this this um, pattern of voting for the lesser of the two evils? How do we change this? Or is this even, again, I go back to what I said last week. Is this even something we can change as far as our votes matter? Um... I think we need to this election. We need to really pay more, more, more att- uh, attention to our congressmen and our senators, aldermen, like local elections or uh, people that's directly voted from different regions of where you're from, and they carry your voice and what you want in your region and where you where you at. Uh, because the president is just the speaker for that, right? But when the president, when the bill goes through Congress, it's that senator that you voted from that's from Illinois or the Congress, that state representative that you voted from Illinois that has the right to veto that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think you pay more attention to those people opposed to worrying about the president. Is it a matter, too, of, because um, you were just mentioning, like, how that, how the, what the different roles are for different people in the judicial system. Do we go back to... Because I know, like a lot of people, we've been out of school for a long time. Do we do a refresher and say, "Look, at these are the roles, and these are what they mean"? Because I think a lot of the times people go into they go vote and they don't even know what these roles mean. They don't even know. Okay, I vote for this person, but what does this mean if I vote for this person? I think we we I believe we should do it, but you know, um, you remember back in the day when you used to have them them them, them um, voter die campaigns. Mm-hmm. And like the top, your top celebrities and yeah, the game used to come in and and and, and educate you and use their platform, the BTS and the MTVs and all that. Type mm-hmm. of um, I think I believe it need to be another one of those campaigns going on. But the fact that instead of instead of voting in in, in the present the presidential election being the number one topic in media right now. Mm-hmm. It's I'm not, going to, I'm not trying to downplay everything, but it's scandals. Mm-hmm. It's scandals. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's nothing but scandals and allegations and sexual assaults and bringing down celebrities. That's that is more popular now than the election. So I, it was just in the news too that um, Trump. They voted that Trump can absolutely like a state can't bla- ban Trump from running. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? What do I think about it? I yeah. I think about uh, you think they made the right call. I think about I thought when Trump didn't get locked up 
for the January 6th, what they call it, I forgot what Yeah, the, when he called the mob action thing that happened down at D.C. Capitol, once he, he didn't get arrested for that, I feel like there's nothing that you can blackball him from. Hmm. Do you feel like they are doing this because it's him? Do you think that another president would have gotten away with this? Well, what he did, I mean, yeah. so do, I don't. Trump knows laws, mm. so nothing Trump has done has broken the law. Mm. It's pissed the law off. Mm -hmm. It's pissed a lot of people off, but he hasn't broken any laws. Because if he's broken any laws, he'd be in jail. Do you feel like, um, and this is just a prediction, obviously we have a long way to go till November, but do you feel like he might win presidency again? It's a strong possibility. <laughs> it's 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see President Biden winning this election again. I just feel like he was, a, like, a, minus the whole canceling that, like, it's been a terrible run. He, you know, it's not just the look at how this whole war went, went with the war with the Palestinians and then the migrants. And then you got the um, even with Ukraine, them sending over, you know, there was a big issue with them sending over as much money as they did to Ukraine. It's been an issue with them sending allocating funds to all of these countries. Meanwhile, we have so many homeless people here or allowing the migrants to come here. And now, oh, we're going to give out stipends and we're going to do this but our black and brown kids in the communities don't even have the resources that they and now these migrants are getting bold and saying things and feeling like they're above the law i don't really know if he's going to win election this year um black and brown kids does have the resources that they have that they need in our community so let's start there right and i hate to be that guy right just, yeah, just, you on one today. I don't know what's going on with you. I just love a third world country, and I seen what it's not to have those resources, right? So we okay. have we have the resources, and we also have the information we needed to succeed. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think, and I can just tell by firsthand. I don't think the focus is on that, right? So do I do? Mm -hmm. Do I think? Um, do I believe it should be more care to black and brown communities? Yes. But when I say when I say that focus and care and that resources, it shouldn't be resources to give us anything, right? Mm -hmm. it should be more things to expose. Like it should it need to be So hand, like more STEM schools. Or it should be hand to hand. Like we need some type of community outreach where we're at where we're going hand to hand, like really I don't want to say forcing, but like really connecting with individuals that won't that want more but don't know how to get it, right? Okay, so you say this though, but the community outreach is going to need money. Where is that money coming from? Uh, it's going to come from the government, but I think there's nobody. Okay, that's gonna, so that's how is the government going to provide that when they're cutting budgets in schools and they're allocating funds to people that are not even from here, or yeah, they're just allocating funds to people that are not from here? So, but the the government are cutting budgets in schools, right? So we're relying on the government to teach our children. That's the, that's that's our that's our first mistake. Okay. That's our very first mistake. We lied on the government to keep teach our kids. Also, we elect the people that's on these boards to do to cut these funds. So if we, um, I'm gonna just throw this out there, and, you, and I, the the answer that I want is probably not gonna be the answer, right? Because I don't know what you do um within your community. But how many aldermen meetings or city hall or town hall like just community meetings have you attended in your years? None. <laughs> None. So I asked this question to so many people, but you don't realize like they have these meetings in, the, in every community, every war, and just we're gonna talk about Chicago. They have these meetings where your aldermen and just people to come together throughout the years. Now they people are starting to show up now because the migrants. But what about these meetings that were showing up when you was talking about police cameras, or when you were talking about grocery stores, when you were talking about the streets, when you're talking about the schools, and put it like meeting the principals and going to the curriculum, like. Where was those meetings then? Why are you, why weren't you attending those meetings there? But I got many people hitting my phone trying to get to a Chris Brown concert. Like mm. so, we put our we put our attention we put our attention where we wanted to go to, right? Mm -hmm. So the resources there. So what? If you go sit in front of the politician, and this is what happened to me my freshman year in college, I went down. Uh, shout out to Aaron Mallory, but they was trying to cut like I think it was like the Pell Grant or the Map Grant uh, in my freshman year in college. So we went down to Springfield um, and protested. And we actually talked to like our different uh, senators and congressmen from our office, our district. And I actually sat down with the guy that was over the neighborhood where I was at. 
and I was asking him these questions and like, yo, and he was, and he, everything he said, he rebutted with like, yo, well, you know, we meet this time and we do this and we do that as your people showing up and they, who was the voice was like, I, I'm only here to report what the people want, but if the people not showing up and demanding it, I can't, what can I take back to Congress? Mm -hmm. what, what can I fight for? How are y'all holding me accountable? And he was saying this, how are y'all holding me accountable? Okay. Fair. That's these, fair. Some of these same people been been in power in our community for years, and we be like, "Fake ain't." But y'all ain't voting them out. Y'all ain't went to the meetings. Y'all ain't took y'all camera. Well, I mean, it goes back to what we say when you know we're even in a business relationship. I don't know what you need, so they. I mean, it is their job to find out, but they could easily use that as an excuse. Oh, I don't know what you need. You're not telling me what you need. You know what I need. You know, but you think about how many people live in the community and how much we spend money. Shit. Let's say if we put together a uh, a community campaign fund, right? But you don't feel like these things trickle down, though, when you talk about, okay, teaching. Like, it's just so many layers to this that I feel like they, it's it not. Goes, it, goes it's back, just, it goes back to you finish shit that our people always held our hands on. From what I always said, we're performative. And I want to say we're so we lack accountability for right we lack about accountability lack about lack accountability for, because the accountability part is that it's one thing to for you to be like oh we got slave mentality if you tell a person that from the 1920s but you don't then then when you start thinking about it like yo it's a golden era from the 1920s to the 1950s where all black people were scholars mm -hmm. When black people knew like different languages, when black people not just in, the, in Atlanta but all across the, the world, like they were scholars, they learned. They, you know, that's how we get to W. E. D. Du Bois and the Booker T. Washington mm -hmm. all these to learn. So they, you, we myself thinking that oh no, this is slave mentality. We so for a hundred years, so all through the nineteen hundreds, we were just one trying to learn. We weren't trying to do anything. No, we were like going to college was a thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? To begin higher education, becoming engineers. Shit. That's how you get movies like Hidden Fit shit. Like shit was a thing. So it's not no trickle down. Shit. It's one point in time. And I want to say when a drug But also was there was things that happened within the communities that had that stifled that. So we can't not acknowledge those things either. We can acknowledge those things, but what is those things? We want we want we blame welfare in the 1970s. That had a, that had a lot to do with it. But also the same thing that happened with a lot of uh a lot of communities in poverty around that time was the war. The war of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. The war of Vietnam brought back, a, it killed a lot of people, fathers, mm -hmm. a lot of people, brothers. It brought back a lot of people that was on drugs. And then you got the crack era right after that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I fucked up a lot of shit. And I'm not, neg I'm not negating that, right? But the moment, the moment when you realize you fucked up at, and you still hanging on to, and you still like making the same decisions, like if you know, like, damn, I'm keep eating flaming Hots and I do this shit bad for me. That you, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. But when we was growing up eating flame hot as kids, we didn't know that shit was bad for us. We just thought that was a tasty snack, right? Mm -hmm. But when we got older, they told us shit bad. This is everything in it. We can read it. What's in it? It ain't good for your body, your digestive system. So if I keep eating it, I can't blame for flame hot no more. Mm -hmm. So the moment that I know that that the society fucked up, then the, 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 I know that, that also goes back to the resources. Because if you didn't have the resources to go to the doctor or to get quality health care. That's a part of why you don't know. So we do know we got quality. Everything is at our fingertips. We live in an information age. When two thousand hit, when the internet got here, we could find out anything. But you know, most of us use the internet for porn and music. <laughs> I know I do. Like, come on, like <laughs> you can't the re and I can't and I I I, I won't fold on this. Is because it's like I see what we do when we put our energy and our focus on. I see what our brothers do when they're in jail. When they locked in and focus in jail, I see what they yeah. do. I seen what people, when the PPP scandal came out, and I, I see the, all my scammer homies. I see how they put together plans and do what they got to do to make some money. We don't put that energy into our day-to-day -day lives or things that we have to do shit the right way or figure out different ways to do shit. Like, we don't. We complain about it, you know what I mean? But we won't even figure out the, the answer shit even I, I look at it when i'm doing work or uh, work projects for somebody it doesn't be shit when i ask somebody like yo did you just did you google that no nah, i just wanted to ask you first google it 
You know what I'm saying? That's Cody's favorite. For y'all to know, that's Cody's favorite line is to, did you Google it? If you didn't Google it, don't come ask me. Because you know what's another, you know what's another favorite line. I know I'm infamous for doing that. I hit you about everything. Because you know what else they t- they tell about our people is if you want to hire information from us, put it in put a it book. in a book. Yeah. So that's that's that, that's my thing from that. Like, no, nah, I'm not going. The information is there. You just you, I don't want us to ever live up to that stereotype. So yes, mm-hmm. go Google it. Go research it. Go to a library. You know what I mean? Go learn anything you want to go do. You can go learn. Everybody talking about getting their CDLs and become traveling nurses now with oh real estate and all this shit now towards the end because the pandemic happened. But it's people been doing this shit for years. Mm-hmm. Shit not hard. Do you feel like there's an obligation for those people who have learned to ne- then teach the next generation? Because you hit me with the Google, but at the same time, you took the time to learn this information. If you could give it to me in a faster way. The, in a way that I may understand because some people don't learn through reading. They may learn better if they have a conversation with somebody. Do you feel like there's some responsibility there, though, to then educate? Um. Yes, right? Because you're right. You're right. You're right. But we do have... That's the thing, right? If you teach a person how to fish, they'll never go hungry. If you give them a fish, they go go hungry once you leave. You know what I'm saying? So mm. look, look, look how you just said trickle down the fish and shit, right? So once... If, if I'm the father, and you know, everything that you got in life can come through me. Everything you got come through me. I, 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 you didn't go research nothing. You didn't go learn nothing. Everything I ever taught you go through. When, the minute I get sick and die, now you fucked up by yourself, right? Mm. I didn't teach you how to survive on your own. Yeah. So That's, I, yeah, I could see that because, like. I would rather you go, I would rather you go look for the information, read it, comprehend it, how you comprehend it, and you come back to me and you have a conversation about it. But if you just going off what I say, that's he say, she say. You just I could tell now I'm mad for you because now I can just tell you anything. How that's you true. Know? Yeah, you could tell me any. Yeah, that makes sense. How, how do you think slaves was enslaved through the Bible? Because they mm-hmm. couldn't read the Bible. So the masters they took they took the different parts of the Bible that they wanted them to know that talked about slavery and they preached it to them so they embedded it in their head like this this was slavery was. Uh, a thing from God. A thing from God. Because I told you that. Mm-hmm. When when that in that movie, um, book of Birth of a Nation, when Nat Turner, when he went out and read, because they taught him how to read. When he got a mm-hmm. copy of the real Bible and he started reading different things, and like, hold on, this is false and false and that changed the entire game. Yeah. So no, I get what you're saying. It's, it's my ability to teach you, but at the same time, we got to go out and get the information for ourselves, and then come back and have a conversation for it. Because if I if I know everything, and you and you don't, and you don't even want to go out and try to interpret it a little bit for yourself, I can control your mind and how you think in any way I want you to think. Hey, uh-huh. what's up? What's the word?